Hi folks, this is Mr. Ackerman. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this video builds on a previous video that dealt with the topic of vector components. Uh, in the previous video, which uh, I believe is called Introduction to Vector Components, we learned all about what vector components are, how they're a different way of writing vectors than the way you learned in grade 11. Uh, but we didn't really learn what you can do with vector components, and that's what today's topic is about. So the title, Adding Vectors Using Components, here's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the old way, the way you learned in grade 11, uh, tip-to-tail vector addition and calculating the result of a vector addition using sine and cosine laws. And we're going to compare that with the new way, tip-to-tail vector addition using components. And hopefully by the end of this you're going to see that it is in fact easier and more efficient to use components. So let's get into it. Uh, first thing we're going to do is, uh, if you're following along in the textbook, I'm going to ask you to turn to page 15, sample problem 5. And for those of you who don't have the textbook, I've cut and paste, um, pasted a little bit of the problem so you can get an idea of what we're talking about here. Uh, in the question, they say that a bird flies in a horizontal plane from point P to B and then F, and that's as shown in figure A right over here. So you see the bird going 22 meters in a direction of uh, 33 degrees north of east, and then turning and going 11 meters, 28 degrees south of east. So the first thing I'm going to do is just write those down in a different color so that you can keep track of them. Let's call this one delta D1, and we're going to see that delta D1 is 22 meters in a direction 33 degrees north of east. Then we're going to use a different color to denote the second vector, and I guess I'll maybe use red for that. So here's the second vector here, we'll call it delta D2. That one's going to be 11 meters in a direction 28 degrees south of east. Okay. And the question asks a number of things. They ask for the total distance traveled. We're going to skip that. They ask for the average speed. We're going to skip that. So X those out. What we're interested in is the total displacement. Uh, and we're going to see how by adding these two vectors using components, you can get the displacement. And it's going to be easier than the way you're used to, which probably involves sine and cosine law. And by the way, we're also going to skip D. So you can ignore that. Okay. So uh, if you uh, follow along, or if you've been following along, and you remember what we learned about vectors previously in components, you know that you can write each of these vectors in component form. Now I'm not going to show you the calculation, because you should know how to do that by now. If you don't, then go back to the previous video. But this one, in component form, comes to 18.45 comma 11.98 meters, and this one here comes to, uh, let's see, 9.71. I've already calculated these previously. I'm not picking these off the top of my head. I've actually done the uh, trigonometry involved. Okay, notice that the y component of the second vector is actually negative, and you can see that that's the case because this vector here actually goes downward into the negative y uh, uh, quadrant there, or the negative y part of um, an xy plane. So make sure you've got that negative. Now what do we do to find the total displacement? Well it's actually quite easy. All you do when you're adding two vectors in component form is just stack them vertically like this, add the x components together to get the resulting x component. Uh, 18 and a half plus roughly 10 going to be somewhere around 28 and a half. If you run this through your calculator you get pretty close to that number. I get 28.16. Uh, 12-ish minus 5-ish, you get about 7. If you run this through your calculator, you're going to get 6.82. That's close, so I know I'm in the right ballpark. And these are the components of the resulting vector. Now, you might be wondering, what exactly have I done? Like, what does this represent? Well, let's take a look at diagram B here. This is the grade 11 way that you may have remembered adding vectors. When you add vectors, you're supposed to add them in a manner that's called tip to tail. 
So you draw the first vector here, delta d1, and its tip connects with the tail of the next vector. So we call that tip to tail, in case you forgot. And that's how vectors are added. And when you do that, once you add all the vectors that you've got, here there's just two, then the resulting vector, that's this one, the result, or some people call it the total displacement, it's up to you, that runs from the very start to the very end. And that is the definition of a displacement vector, from start to end, straight line. We still have to find the magnitude and direction, however, we're not done. So what do we do next? Well, take the components that we calculated a moment ago and plot them. So what I'll do here to make things as uh, neat as possible is I'll try to draw an xy grid. There we go. So this is going to be the y direction, also known as north, and this is going to be the x direction, also known as east. And I'm going to try to draw 28.16 in the x direction, 6.82 in the y direction. That's going to take me quite a bit across in the x, and maybe not too high or too far in the north direction, and that's going to land me right about there. And now what I can do is maybe, uh, let's see, what color should I use here? I haven't used magenta in a long time. I'm going to use magenta. And we're going to go from the start to the finish, and voila, there is your delta D total, or resultant, drawn out. Now it's got to have some sort of angle, we call that theta, and we're going to draw it in there. And now all that's left to do is find the magnitude and the direction. So if you remember, to find the magnitude, you have to use Pythagorean theorem. And that's going to be the square root of 28.16 squared plus 6.82 squared, I'm doing this all in one step. And uh, if you run that through your calculator, that's going to come out to, I believe, 28.97, which rounds to two sig figs, 29 meters. And we also need to find the direction, and that we find using trig. Uh, you can use the tan ratio here, opposite over adjacent. So we're going to have tan theta equals the opposite, 6.82, over the adjacent, which is 28.16. And if you do that, you're going to come out with theta equaling about 13.61 degrees. Okay. Now, for those of you following along in the book, they do this question for you using sine and cosine law, so you can see the other method. And you're going to see that they do, in fact, come out with the following answer. Delta D equals, they say, 29 meters, which is what we have here to two sig figs. And they also have, they round this to two sig figs, 14 degrees. So that's 14 degrees north of east. So we've got the same answer that the book does. We did it a slightly different way. They did it, like you can see here, with sine and cosine law and triangles and adding and subtracting angles and using various geometry ideas. We did it just a little bit differently using components. And you might be looking at this and thinking, well, who cares? They're, they're both pretty much the same amount of time to do either or method. So let me put one uh, a nail in the coffin of the sine and cosine law triangle method by showing you a situation where you would definitely want to use components. So let's X this out and go to another page that I've prepared for you. Title here, why you want to use components. Suppose you did the following. Suppose you or the bird moved from point A to point B, B to C, but now there's more. C to D, D to E, E to F. Suppose this is what happened. Five separate displacements, delta D1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, as opposed to what we just saw in this, pro in this problem, 
where there was just two displacements. Notice that two displacements in two dimensions give you a triangle. Triangles are pretty easy to solve. But what happens when you end up with five displacements? Here's your delta D total going from the start, which is over here, to the end, which is over here. Now what are you going to do? Now you don't have a triangle anymore. So if you want to solve this using triangles, here's the way to do it. You're going to need to first take these two vectors, delta D1 and 2, and combine them the way we did using uh, sine and, or the way the book does using sine and cosine law. And if you do that successfully, then delta D1 and 2 will collapse into this line that I've drawn here. So let me show you what would happen. You could now happily erase Sorry, you could happily erase, at least I'm trying to erase here, delta D1, my eraser doesn't want to work very well, I apologize. There we go. Okay, you'd get rid of that. And you'd have a new delta D here. And then what would you do? Well, you would next take this and that, and you would combine them into one using sine and cosine law. And you'd get this. And then you could erase. There's another way I can erase, which is a lot more efficient. You could then erase those two. But now you'd have this and the blue one, and you'd have to combine them using sine and cosine law. So at this point, we've done sine and cosine law something like three times. We're going to have to do it again to get rid of delta D5. So you're going to have to do sine and cosine law over and over and over again if you ever have a problem that looks like, I'm just going to go back a few spaces to show you how we started this. This is what we started with. Okay, that's as far back as I can go, but you get the picture. Lots of vectors being added, big problem for sine and cosine law. How would you do this using components? Easy, very easy. You would just write delta D1. You'd write delta D1 in component form, x comma y. You'd write delta D2 in component form, x comma y. You'd write delta D3 in component form, x comma y. You'd write delta D4, x comma y. And finally, you'd do delta D5, x comma y. You'd add them all up to get delta D total the same way we add it up in the sample problem to get delta D total. And once you got to the end here with your final x and y components, you would just find the magnitude and the direction the same way we did in our sample problem here. So you tell me what's easier. Sine and cosine law four or five times, or just add these up, find the magnitude and direction. It's pretty clear what the answer is. Also, we're going to be using components later on in the course uh, when we deal with acceleration and forces and a whole host of other vectors. So you definitely want to get used to this. Don't avoid this method just because it's new and requires a little bit of effort. It'll certainly make your life easier. To uh, leave you with an exercise that you can try on your own in order to uh, make sure you understand this, go to page 16 of the textbook and try question number, uh, I believe it is 20A. Yeah, it's question 20A. That is a question that basically parallels what we did in here so you can see if you understand everything. All right, folks, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I will uh, see you again in a future video. Take care.